Genesis chapter 1, everything that God made is good. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise him. Give him a shout out. Tell him, thank you, Jesus. Tell him, thank you, Jesus, for he did it for you. It wasn't by your own self that you made it here this day. It was by his grace and his mercy. Amen. And we are not consumed. His compassion fail us not. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to um, thank God uh, for another opportunity to be in the house, to be able to be a part of this great ministry, this teaching ministry that we have here at Restoration Free Gospel under the under the uh, man of God of uh, Bishop John Briscoe and his wife Mary Ann Briscoe. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Today is Mother's Day, y'all. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to my wife, Fiona. I teased her coming down the road. I messed with her, got her all stirred up and everything. And she was all aroused and just wanted to do this. I said, I knew I was opening up till I get her. Happy Mother's Day, baby. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, man. And God do have a sense of humor. He has a sense of humor, y'all. Amen. Uh, I'm Elder Barnes at Restoration Free Gospel Church here. Uh, for all of you on social media that don't know. Um, all right, we're going to go in and go into prayer. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, here we are again. You have made it for us to be here again, Father God, and we just thank you so much. Today, Father God, we stand here as a family, and we want to give your name glory. We want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We want to give you all the praises, the honor, and the glory for you deserve it. You are a good God. We love you, Father God. We trust you. So have your way in this place today. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord God, the Shekinah glory, Lord God, in this place. And touch hearts, Father God. Touch all hearts. So one stand in need of one thing and one stand in need of another. But, Father God, you are able to provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we need you. We need you. So, Father God, have your way with us. For your word tells us that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what your word says. So, Father, we call on you. We need you. So, have your way, Lord God. We are not too proud to beg, Lord. We need you, Father God. Every minute of the hour, we need you. So, have your way. Even in the Midnight hours, we need you. So have your way with us, Father God. We thank you. We thank you, Father God, for all of what you have done already for us, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We give your name praise, Father God. You deserve all the glory and the honor. So the man of the hour, Father God, the speaker of the hour, use him mightily, Father God, to bring forth a thus says the Lord. Use him. Speak through him, Father God. Have your way with him. Even him. Speak to him, Father God. In the name of Jesus. In the mother of this house, Father God. Bless her. Touch her. Even speak to her now as she lay waiting to heal him. Touch her right now, Father God. Move into her life like never before, Father God. They, you say that it's in no moment, Father God, that you really show up and show out. So have your way, Father God. Let it be known that it's you and only you that did it for her, Father God. So overtake her. Bless the man of God, our bishop, Father God. Bless him, Father God. Strengthen him, Father God. Oh, Father God, go all into his heart and his mind, Father God, and let him know that everything is going to be all right. Let him know, Father God. You, you say that we find peace in you, Father God. We find peace in you. You give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. So strengthen him, Father God, and bless him. 
people, Father God, and let him know that everything is going to be all right. And for the family, the church family, we're here, Father God. We trust you, and um, we just want to lift up your name. We want to bring your name glory, Father God, in our actions and our words and our deeds. Just bring your name glory, and we thank you. And we be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. 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 As I was coming to church this morning, it was the song that was set, uh, playing. And um, and it, it really moved me every time I hear this song. And it's, it's definitely for us. It's for all of us. I just want to hit a, a note or two on it. Um, and I pray that it, it, it encourages us, that the song encourages us. And it goes, um, uh, I'm a believer. Do you know what that means? That means I'm far from perfect. Simply redeemed now. I was bought with a purpose. I was purchased by love. Not just a form of religion, but it's a gift from above. I am not perfect, but I have been redeemed. We are all, we have been bought with a price, y'all. We have been bought with a price. Sin was so bad that somebody had to die for the sins. And somebody took our, our place on that cross. He took our place. He suffered for us all. And all he, and one of his commandments that he left for us is that we love one another. Despite our differences, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but he wants us to love one another. Amen? And sometimes we find that hard to do. Um... If they're not doing it the way that we doing it, or if they're not doing it the way that she doing it, we find a difference and we start to judge. But we can't judge. Because at the end of the day, we all have to put our minds and say we all have to rejoice in heaven together in oneness. One day. So settle your differences now. So when we get there, we can come together, y'all. Amen. We are family forever. This is more deeper than the, your normal family. This is. Amen. Hallelujah. And the reason why I keep looking on this, I got more people on that side. I'm sorry. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go to scripture reading. Let's let's go to um Romans uh chapter chapter eight. Let's do chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. You have a say, man. Hallelujah. The Bible reads, starting at verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation to us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. For what the law could not do and that it was weak in the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemns sin in the flesh that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, the old person. But those who, who, who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. Go to, stay right there in the same uh, chapter. But I wanted to go to um, the verse. Uh, 31. Let's go to 31 and I'm going to close it. And the Bible reads, What then shall we say to these things? 
It said, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And they say, who should bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also make intercession for us? Who should separate us from the love of Christ? Should tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword as it is written? For your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors, y'all, through him who loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing shall separate. Don't let even you convince you that we are separate or we've done so much that we, he don't hear us. Don't let you convince you let alone that the devil himself or in his, his imps or his demons. Don't let nobody convince you that you are not, that you are separated from God. Amen? Stay with him. He's with you. Read your word. Get in your word. Spend time in your word and understand who he is and how he works in your life. Amen? Life, even though heaven is ours, as good as that is, but life's supposed to be enjoyed. You have to enjoy your life every day in spite of the circumstances and the situations that you're going through. I'm not here to preach. I, I got to shut it down. But uh, the next you will hear Judah praise. Judah praise. Then after that, you will hear our elder Russell Slade. God bless you all. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Come on, I want to I want to hear some. I know we it may not be as full and seem like to be as big as we want the church to be, but happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I haven't told y'all, but I really want to tell y'all how much I appreciate y'all in praise and worship and, and serving God together. Amen. How many in the house that know that the Lord is good and his mercy and good forever? Come on, stand to your feet if you just want to worship and just feel. And if you can't, you don't have to. Let's stay right there. Look. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, help me out say, Lord. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Get 
your praise on. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Hey, for you are good. enough to get somebody some praise. Mothers out there, mothers out there, you are good. You are good, mothers. Come on, somebody out there as a mother, touch yourself and say, I'm good, God. I serve a good God. Come on, touch yourself, mothers out there, say, you are good. And your mercy endure forever. Woo. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. When I wake up in the morning, you're good. Hallelujah. When I'm going through my storms, you are good. When I can't get what I want, you're still good. It don't matter, you're still good. Even when I wake up, my body reeks with pain, you're good. Don't matter what my situation or storms look like. You're a good God. Hallelujah. You are good. Hallelujah. Step up here, sir. Ah, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we do. Hey. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit.
somebody should be running over right now. Running over with joys. You might have came in here with a heavy heart. But praise will replace that. Fill me up. Ooh. How many people know the mothers out there talking to you that you deserve it? All your labor, all the pampers you changed, all the finances, everything that you've done for the Lord. Because the Bible says in Colossians 3, 17, whatsoever a man do, whether it be in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we know you're wholeheartedly standing behind your children. So you deserve this, and we want you to know that. You deserve it all over the place. It's a place that you can praise. Take a praise position today. And the only reason I'm talking, because some of us are, we don't understand we want God to fix a problem, but we won't give him the praise. We want God to be right there in the midst of your storm, but we won't even let him on the boat. We got to let him in. Listen. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you.
everything. It all belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Lord, my hallelujah, yeah, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 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 Y'all finish. We finish praises. We finish praising God. Y'all finish praising God. What you got? Come on, let's give God the glory. This is for the Mother's Day. We believe you deserve it. Give God the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Come to lift his name up. Oh. Mm. Come on, it's a song on somebody's heart. I feel I ain't going to wait until the song is brought out. How many people know that God has made a way for you? God is a way maker Hallelujah. when it seems like there's no way. There's not a way. The only reason I think we see some of the faces up here because they know I like to pitch you on spot in praise. Songs just got to come out. God is such a good God. When I hear the keys, I can think about all the triumphs all the victory God has allowed me to have. I remember my eight years in prison. Woo! I went from the pit to the prison to the palace. And you tell me God can't make a way. Even when it seems like there's no way. Let me just give you a short testimony while you're playing, brother. They offered me 65 years. That's what they was offering me. And my lawyer came down and said, Slade. And I said, yes, sir. He said, they want to give you 65. And I said in the back of my head, because the brother told me 10 weeks earlier, whenever somebody brings you a bad report, say, uh-uh, not what God said. So they came back a second time, brother. And he said, Slade. And I said, yes, sir. And I stood up and he said, the offer is 40 years this time. And I said in my spirit, that ain't enough time to raise my kids. God didn't say that. He went back upstairs. Never came back the third time. He brought me before the Honorable Judge P. Mank. And I got before him. And he gave me a break because God touched his heart. He said, I know all these people want to take you and send you away and throw you away like you ain't nothing. He said, I'm going to do you a favor, sir, which wasn't a favor. But he said he's going to do me one. So you got to take a favor where you need one. After hearing 65 and hearing 40, he said, I'm going to take the 40 and I'm going to take two fives off of both the 20s and I'm going to run a concurrent and I'm going to give you 15 with a possibility of parole in eight. If you do right while you in there. But I got a few things to ask of you, sir. He said, if you complete your GED and start two years of college, I'll get you back in five years before me. It happened. As he spoke it because God touched his heart. So I went back before him. I hope this ain't boring none of y'all because it's real dear to my heart. I got before him again. And he said, how you doing, Mr. Slade? I said, he went from this Russell Slade to Mr. I said, something good ready happened. Oh, my God, something ready happened. He said, have you completed the assignments I asked of you? My lawyer took the papers up to him, man, approached the bench, stuck them up on there, and he went through them. To make a long story short, he said, good job. I'll see you 
in five years. I said, five years? He said, hold on, I missed something on the paper. I called you back when, it, when, when your paperwork goes through and I'll send you the second Genesis. He said, man, I only got but three. It ended up being three more years. It went from, it went from all of that to five to eight, doing the eight anyway, basically going home to second Genesis, completing the program to start my life over. God will give you a new start if you hand your heart over to him. And I did what the man said, and I didn't have to do 65 years. So we thank you for your patience. I just had to get that out. I want you to know somebody on social media don't know God can make a way. He's a way maker. He made a way. He made a way. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best, and nothing can catch you by surprise. You got this figured out. And you watching us now. My God. And when it looks as if we can't win, God, I know you. You stepped in. This is personal. Everything we need you supply. Listen. You who got this in control. And now we know, help me out, praise team. You made a way. When our back was. When our backs were against the wall. And it looks as if it was all over. You Come on. made a way. And we're standing. And we're standing. Off. Tell them. You paid away. And now we're here. Not looking back on where we come from. Hallelujah. It's because of you ain't nothing we've done. To deserve the love and mercy you've shown. Your grace was strong enough, come on, to pick us up because you hey. made a way. When our back was, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was all over. You made a way. Let's go with that. And you stand it? And we're standing here only because. We're standing here only because you. So you move. You move mountains. You cause. You cause walls to fall. With your, with your power. Your miracles. With your miracles. There is nothing. There is nothing. I mean nothing. That's impossible. Hey. And we're standing here only because you. Because you made. And we're standing here. 
Mountains are moving, chains are falling. Mountains are moving, chains are falling. Like somebody, mountains, mountains are, are moving. Come on, chains. Chains are falling. Mountains. Mountains are moving. Chains. Chains are falling. Mountains. Mountains are moving. Chains are falling. Mountains are moving, chains are falling. Hey, mountains are moving. Come on. Chains are falling. Mountains. Mountains are moving. Chains. Chains are falling. Say. Mountains are moving. My God. Chains are falling. Falling. Mountains are moving. The mountains move. Chains are falling. Are you poor? But you made a way when it seems to be no way. He made a way for the children of Israelites part of the sea so they can walk right through. And I don't care what you're going through today. He'll make a way for you. Just like that. He'll build you a highway. He'll build you a bridge. He'll let you live. He's a way maker. I didn't give you before the testimony that I had died. And it's not about me. I had expired. And if I had, if God had let me expire that day, I would have went to hell. And you probably say, how do you know that? I would have went to hell. I wouldn't live right. I wouldn't baptize in Jesus' name. I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. I had no purpose. I had no hope. I had no direction. I had no assurance. I didn't have assurance then. I just had insurance. So if he had allowed me to stay in that, that state that I was in, could you just think back in some states that you've been in? Just for a second. Could you think about some things where God had you and some situations you were in? If it had not been for the Lord, who that was on your side, never left you, never would leave you, nor will he forsake you, where would you be right now? You might have did some time in jail. And the only reason I talk about it is because I'm transparent, because guess what? My past is exactly what it is. It's my past. And it has passed away. That's the only way I can sing the song and say, and I'm standing here. It's only because you made a way. That's the only reason I can say it when my back was against the wall and it looks as if it was over, Lord, you made a way. Songs are personal to me. I ain't just up here for no entertainment. I can sound like a broken record, but God loves my voice. See, I stopped trying to please people. And I learned if I please God, then I can please people. Because even if people don't like what I'm saying or what I have to say, one thing I can say, my God is pleased with me. The scriptures tell me that. We can go back to what the scriptures say. He's pleased with, pleased with me. So again, happy Mother's Day. Thank you all for putting up with us all year long. And I know especially me. 
you know, if you mothers and my mom's not here, but I know if she was here and she could, you know, if I could go talk to the grave site, but I know that don't work. I just had to wait because the Bible says you shall see them again, the loved ones that you lost along the way. So I got to do what's right in God's eyesight. She was somebody I was always trying to please. I know I'm talking to somebody out there in Facebook. Somebody understand what I'm talking about today. I was always trying to do right by my mother. Daddy, I wasn't even really concerned, but daddy, but mama, I wanted to please that mama. I wanted her to feel good about me. I wanted her to know that she was cared for and loved, just like all of y'all are. You're still here in the face. You can breathe, touch, taste, bless, yeah, bless. touch, smell. You can do all these things. We just thank the Lord for it. Today, I won't stand brief. I just want to give honor to Jesus Christ as the head of my life, the source of my life, the strength of my life, the peace of my life, the love of my life. I have to say that to Jesus every morning. I want to also give honor to our bishop here, Bishop John Briscoe, and his lovely bride that's not here with us physically, but spiritually. Keep, keep praying and keep praying much for her because she's a great woman of God and she, she loved the Lord. And we know God answered prayers. We know he not only hears them, but he answered prayers. Also, I would like to give honor to my beautiful wife, Minister Latasha, um, who had to go out and support her niece graduation. So I had to share her with my niece. And that was difficult. And I was left home with two canines. So it was a rough week, y'all. And I think I got two hours sleep last night. Because they was barking and looking for mama and you know, and barking, making noise. So y'all mothers are missed. Just know when y'all, when, when y'all leave and you're not in here in the house of God, you are missed tremendously. So I'm hoping and praying, traveling mercy as she travel back. Also, I want to give our honor to the ministerial staff, amen, the elder, the ministers, the deacons and their wives, but most importantly, the whole household of faith and the social media, whoever may be viewing. And if you from restoration and you're viewing and you could be in the house, it's not too late. You can come on down. It's better in person. Turn your Bibles, if I can get you to turn your Bibles to 1123, amen? Hebrews. We're going to get to brewing. Uh, I don't know how you like your coffee this morning. God is about to brew something up in your life. And it's to the mothers. I want y'all to really listen to this and really find your part in it, okay? And some of us men, we have to be mothers because we don't have, you know, either the spouse that passed away or, you know, you're, you're raising the child for whatever circumstances. I don't have to go any further. But you have to become a woman. You have to learn how to be sensitive to your children's souls, amen, because they belong to God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. I like that because they saw he was a proper child. He had a special anointing on his life. And they say, we're not afraid of the king's commandment. You know, the king's commandment was brutal at that time. If you went against his commandment, you could lose your head. But they went against it. The word is blessed in Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for everybody, rep every family that's represented in this sanctuary. Whether your spouse here, your mother out there today, your children are here, God, I ask you to bless the household. I ask you to move upon the household. I ask you to touch, heal, deliver, set free, make whole. Bless them. Bless them. Hold them tight. Bring their finances to fruition. Give them the blessing they need and deserve. Lift them up out of those dark moments and place them into your marvelous light. 
Hold them, God. Hold them tight. Don't let the enemy try to steal them out of your hand, even though it's impossible. It may feel like the walls are coming down. It may feel like your chains are not being broken. It may feel like your yoke is still around your neck, but the Lord is good and he's mighty and he's strong. God, we just thank you for everything. We thank you for this day that you're here. We just thank you first and foremost for bringing salvation into the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. I got to check out the people because we got good people. You know, I can't do this by myself. Amen. So I thank God. So have a little participation, man. I, it's, it's Mother's Day. And when I think of some mothers uh, that are most underappreciated, you know, sometimes I think mothers are the most unappreciated people in the world at times. You know, I see when some of the wayward children, how they treat them and the things they say to them and all the finances, they take out their mother's pocketbook. I was one of them. My mother rode up and down the courthouses with me. All right? She she never missed a beat, though. She showed up when nobody else wanted to. I think about Rizpah in the Bible. Rizpah threw her blanket down. She didn't go nowhere for months. She sat on a rock. It wasn't a heart. It wasn't a soft couch like we have home. It wasn't a place of comfort. And she threw a rock, she threw something over a rock, a little, just a little blanket. She sat there and she beat the, the daytime animals off her son's course. She beat the nighttime creatures off the course. She wouldn't let anybody or anything defile her children because her children had done nothing wrong. This was the doing of Saul, King Saul, before David. You know, and sometimes business can go bad. Business arrangement can go bad. And they wanted David to hand over some kids that had done nothing to settle a score. Have you ever been in a tight place where you just have to do something that's inconvenient and uncomfortable? And as a mother, I know you have. There's been times where you, the food got real low. And my mother was like, God will make a way. And I say, I hurry, I, 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 I be glad when he hurry up because his peanut butter jelly is, is really sticking to the roof of my mouth. And I want something else. See, I got to tell the truth. And I say, I wish he was hurry up. I didn't look at this, but I'm going to give you all something at the end of it. The bologna, I'm getting tired of cutting and putting a hole in the bologna and frying it on the stove. It ain't tasting the same no more. It's tasting like rubber. I ain't appreciating what God is doing for you in your midst. I wish God would hurry up because the potatoes, I'm getting tired of cooking french fries and I'm running out of grease. Talking to somebody, I know I am. Getting tired of it. I wish God would hurry up because I'm getting tired of putting rice on the stove, a little bit of milk, and a little bit of cinnamon, and drop a little raisins in there. Getting tired of the oatmeal. I'm getting tired of it. Told my mother one morning, I eat oatmeal every day. She said, you're going to continue to eat it. So what I failed to realize at a young age was God was already making a way and providing for me. I had bologna. I had potatoes. I had beans. I had things, but I wanted something else. And that's our human tendency to want a little bit more. Sometimes we want to be out front when we don't need to be out there. Sometimes we do. It's, it's some ladies in the Bibles I want to talk about also. King David's mother and mother-in-law. They wouldn't mention. You got some historians saying some names. I got one name. I'm not even going to throw it out there because it's a historian. I didn't see it in the Bible. You see what I mean? So I don't want to go off of historic, historical facts. The Bible said it wasn't mentioned, but it doesn't mean she wasn't a good mother. A little Rudy fella, right? Out back. He got his anointing from the man of God, but his character was formed through his mother some type of way. She wasn't talked about because he was a, as you, as you know, he was a product. Uh, he was a project of something that took place while he was married. And he was sitting out back taking care of the sheep. David, young David. 
But these mothers are not even mentioned in the Bible. And I think Moses' mother's Jacobad. I hope I'm saying her name. Jacobad, something like that. She, she made it in the Hall of Fame. That's what we just read. She made it in the Hall of Fame. Go to Numbers real fast. Numbers 26. She made it in the Hall of Fame, man. Faithfulness. She was a woman of God. She was a faithful woman of God. For all you men don't like to hear preachers talk about how good women are and how, how women are blessed and how women can preach and all that, I think you need to go back and read your Bible. You really need to read it. Stop giving so much of yourself. Numbers 26, 59. And the name of Amram's wife was Jacobet, the daughter of Levi who her mother bare to Levi in Egypt, and she bare to Abraham, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, their sister. She later was recorded in the Hall of Fames in Hebrews 11.23. At this time, the nation was under a lot of stress. They was in Egypt for 400 times, they, but they grew and they began to prosper. They started prospering. They became a threat to the Pharaoh. It was almost like he was saying they was baby kids. It's like, yes, a lot of them. It's like we kill them, we're doing things to them, but they're constantly multiplying. One thing I know, you can't hold a good man down, but you also can't hold a good woman back. You can't hold her back with the old views that we have a woman. See, a man, God formed man out of the dust, right? Breathe life into him. But then he took the rib. And then the woman came forth. And they didn't like it. And we don't like it because the woman got a mouth like this. She said, got a mouthpiece. And we don't like what she has to say to us sometimes. But we have to know how to face that too. This woman, at this time, she is bearing a child under some serious pressure. They got the Hebrews out there forcing them into slavery. They're making them build cities. They built two of them. And they built these cities with the purpose to break their backs. But they continue to prosper. Sometimes the world will do things to you in the world, try to dry your finances up, try to cut your voice off. It's an attempt to break your back. Don't let the enemy break your back. Because they continue to prosper and grow. So the Pharaoh turned the heat up just a little bit more. He commanded the Hebrews' wives at this time. He commanded them. He said, he said any, any Hebrew woman that was about to give birth, they would have to kill. Kill the baby and throw it. And they wanted them to throw the babies in the, in the Nile. Do you know the Nile was a terrible place? The Nile, was, you couldn't go swim like you swim down Great Mills. You couldn't go in there. It was, it was, it was alligator. It was crocodile. It was snakes, and you would not survive. You wouldn't have to worry about putting no suntan lotion on. None of that, because you're not coming out of it once you go in there. So they, they had this order to anybody giving birth was to kill the, cho the male. They wasn't, look, they wasn't even concerned about the woman. Kill the male, the CE barrier. Take him out. But I thank God that when he, when, well, Pharaoh, let me get it straight. Pharaoh had got to a point. He seen that he couldn't trust the midwives. He said, you know what? They're not even doing what I said, man, because I see more and more. They keep multiplying. How is this happening? Because of God. God was in the middle of all that. He was in the midst. Just like when things are happening, coming against you, but you're still here, right? You still made it. Amen. You woke up this morning. You may have went big with some problems and circumstances, some situations, but look at you. You woke up this morning for a purpose. He don't want you to back up on God. Don't back up on God because everything seems to be going away in your life. Don't back up. We're going to have some tough times. We're going to have some now like moments in our life. Feel like people are tossing us in the now. Feel like we're going down a, a crocodile-infested river in life. Amen? 
But you don't want to get to that point. Don't get to that point where you want to give up. So God had to, he told him this time, look out for the babies. That's what he said. I got the story a little mixed up. He said, here the babies. Watch them. Watch them. When you get it, you see one, throw them in there, but watch them drown. Didn't want you even let the baby, if you throw the baby in there, you notice there's something but special but baby. I don't know if y'all know, you could toss a baby in a swimming pool and they'll come right back up naturally on their own. They'll swim to the top. I don't know how long they will last because, see, a baby can't get out of the pool by itself. At least I haven't seen none. Now, if God wants the baby to do it, it'd be easy, but I haven't seen one. But a baby will naturally come up and float. I threw RJ in the water. Yup, we were down, uh, we was on vacation. And she said, what are you about to do? And I didn't tell her, because I told her I wouldn't have baby did it. Boom. Threw him, and I jumped in the water behind him. And when I came back up, he was already up on his back, doing like this. Floating. That's what babies do. Could you imagine how hard and difficult it must have been for Moses' mother to be given birth to a child at this time. We're in a bad time right now. If you, can, if you can look at it right now, it's hard to think about raising a child and a family and all that. With all this junk going on, you turn the TV on, you got people on the TV uh, committing crimes that, you know, and I ain't got Sarah's name. Y'all know his name been on it ever since he got in the position he got in. And the people keep his name in it because they give him the fuel and energy he needs to go. But in this case, this lady is having a child. A child. One of the difficultest times where they gave an order. See, one thing about Moses' mom, she didn't have to, she didn't have to worry about Marianne or Aaron because they were older. She had to worry about the child that was in her womb that was fair game to the pharaohs. Fair game. Can you imagine that? When I think of some mothers day, I think of the mothers uh, in Africa. I think about how, what they got to do. Can you imagine a, a lion coming up? What you going to do? They got things to ward these animals off. One thing they got, they got the love of God working in them. They don't fear anything, especially something that's supposed to be under them. We say we have, um, what the Bible says, the Bible tells us that we have, um, all things are, um, let me get it. No. We have dominion. Thank you, our minister. We have dominion over all things. We have dominion. Sometimes you can speak to these animals, and they'll look at you just like they understand you. We have dominion over it. It's just that when, 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 when the enemy caused uh, sin to come in the world, they took a part of that sin too. They got it, but they psychologically, the animal is just an instinctive being. We are human beings, meaning we have an intelligence far greater than any animal. We have, a, we have the ability to think our way through, and I'm trying to get us to think about some things. Like some of these mothers in the Bible in Africa, they got a real threat. Somebody coming in and taking their child. You read it on TV, right? They take their child, can you imagine that? Take their child out from their arms and their care and train them to be a, a murderer. That's what they do. They don't train them to go in a, 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 a righteous war. They train them to be a part of something that their mother never intended for them to be. So I think of, but these are some real threats. Then It's a challenging world out here for the mother. No one's threatened to kill or steal our babies in America. I mean, we got some things jumping off now, jumping out of vans and snatching your kids up and taking them away and, 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 and got them all in this stuff, man. They out there sex trafficking. And what are we doing about it? Are we training them up and teaching them the ways that they ought to go? It's this awareness message. I just want you to be a little aware of some things versus some other areas in here. It's not that bad. And even though we don't have people stealing our babies and treating them like they're doing in Africa, there's still a threat out there. There's a spiritual threat. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. So the enemy wants your children on drugs. The enemy wants your children out there doing any and everything they want to do. Robbing. Killing people. 
I look at some of the footage on D.C., and they're having blazing gunshot battles right there on the streets. All this violence, man. It's because we got people in leadership position think they know everything. That's what it is. It's coming to a hope because God is about to expose who's real and who's not real. Watch. I'm going to tell you over the course of these next couple months, if God be willing, watch you see some exposure. Watch you see people falling away like the Bible says. Watch you see some people you thought should have still be, be right here, be gone. Look to your left right now and look to your right. You might not like it, I'm telling you. You're going to start looking around and you're not going to see these people no more. You're not going to see somebody. And how, you know how you can see them? Is you do your part. You do your part and don't worry about theirs. Then you will see yourself where you need to be at. You can pitch yourself in the kingdom or you can kick yourself out the kingdom. It's very easy. Just don't act like you know everything. There's forces out here that threatens us almost to drown our children. Just like we talk talking about the drownings. There's rivers of violence out there, man. All the stuff you turn the TV on, you got all this bad reports on TV. The kids don't know how they're going to make it from day to day. It's up to us as parents, especially those mothers that do first, those years, them, those years, man, to, to really instill your mother. I think the woman really had, it calls woman intuition. I truly believe this, man. My mother had a touch. I don't know if you are. My mother had a touch. If I fell down and hurt my leg or something, Man, my leg would be hanging off. But if I went in there and she touched me and said, you're going to be all right, baby? Man, that's what I believe. It's a touch you have. It's a confident touch. For those that still got their mothers, please love on them. I wish I could have called my mama this morning and said, hey, sweet, I love you and played with her. And couldn't do it, man. Can't do it no more. So if you still have your mothers around, love on them today and tomorrow the next day, and so forth. Love on them as long as God give you breath in your body. Love on them, man. Sh don't wait until one day to give them their flowers. Remember we heard the song they were singing that Saturday? Give me my flowers right now while I can smell them. Give me whatever you want for me to have right now in this moment. Don't wait because this world ain't going to wait for us. to. They're going to continue to attack. The enemy is going to continue to come up against you. The, the, plant things in your mind. That's what the enemy does, plants things in your minds to try to get you off of your course. The TV set, it's a, it's a sea of confusion to me. That's what it does. It brings confusion. Sometimes we can drown in competition. I, don't, I can't understand somebody say, I preach better than you. I teach better than you. I sing better than you. Let God be the judge. He's the only judge. And when we say these things, I mean, we know when something don't sound right because of these ears to our Monsadi head, like speakers, they can hear everything. But we still got to do everything in love. Everything needs to be done in love. And that's what a mother to me is representing, that love that God shows. Now, we know no higher love than God. But a woman's love, have anybody ever felt that touch of love from their mother when the whole world was coming against you but your mama wasn't? When I walked up and down the courtroom steps, man, my mother was walking up and down, and my mother was a very heavy woman at that time. And she wouldn't just let those steps stop her from walking up there. Because a couple of times she told me, go get me a drink out the, uh, out the soda machine. I'm tired doing this with you. We've been doing this for the last couple of years, son. When you going to learn? I love the fact that Jesus was on his way to the cross and his mother never left him. Mary never left Jesus, man. I see some of the mothers in this church. You love your children. You'll do anything for your kids. The thing is, we got to know what's priority. We got to know our priority. We can't be placing things before our children, expecting that God continue to bless us. We got to continue to be the parents that God has allowed us to be. We actually, as they say, guardian, guardian, parental, or guardian. Somebody, you hear that? We're like angels here, actually here, 
God has given you a gift, and he said, all I want you to do is help to get this mold and this gift to be just like me, not like ourselves. Somebody told RJ yesterday we at the tournament, they told him, I want you to be better than your father. And I didn't get mad at it because I knew exactly what the girl was telling him. It's a, a young lady in the neighborhood. Uh, and and y'all, I'm not glorifying drunk. She was a kingpin when I was coming up. Rough lady. And she had changed her life. And I seen her yesterday, her and her husband. And it was good to see them. Because they grabbed me when I walked past. And I was ready to fight. I ain't lying, man. We in, we, we in Virginia. We close to D.C. You know, we in that area. You going to grab me like that? I ain't there yet. I'm like, oh, what's going on? He said, hey, Russell. And I looked in his face. And I said, wow, baby sis. Her name is baby sis. I got to tell her, just a blessing. A blessing to see that God can turn people's lives around. And, you know, I know a lot of people counted her out and her husband. And I know a lot of people that counted me out. Counted me out. Didn't think I would make it this far. God didn't bring me this far just to need me, man. I truly believe that, man. I, I believe that me, him allowing me to come back was just as good as it was for him that it is for me. Now that I know my purpose. My purpose is not to be uh, nobody's judge, but my purpose is to come before the people of God and see about saving souls. If I can get 300 people, I went out today to try to get somebody in, but they waited until I got in Leonardtown and told me, uh, yeah, praise God. Can you imagine? So here we are, see, the king said he wanted all the male Hebrew babies thrown into the Nile. That's what he said. I want them in the Nile. I'm tired. We got we to gotta find some courage in this. I know it's hard. How can you hide an infant? That's my question. How can a mother hide an infant? How can you hide an infant? The baby cries, right? Can you imagine? This was a hard task now. A hard task. She had to hide baby Moses three months. You know, baby, some baby, is it called colic or something like that? So they start to, yeah, they start crying and yelling. So I, I remember that, I think, on my oldest, my first son. And, th and that boy hollered, man. Boy, did he holler. Thought he was a hyena. Trying to get sleep and go work the next day, that boy was hollering. So in this case, she has to stop him. She has to hold him. And then turn around, she had to become all things to this child. And look what I'm going to just give you a quick a couple examples of was Because she had sens sensible faith. After three months hiding her baby, the handwriting on the wall showed up for her. God showed her exactly what she had to do. She had that sensible faith to the spirit. She made a little wicked basket. Do you know, how many people know the wicked basket is the same as the ark? It's the same. Yes, it's the same. Yep, it's the same. The wicked basket is the same thing that Noah had to go into. And, and, and look at the familiarity of Moses now had to go into it. She had to get a wicked basket. She had to cover it with tile. Wasn't the, wasn't the ark covered with tile? She had to cover it with tile, all right? Then she had to pitch it to make it float. The ark had to get pitched to make it float, right? How did he pitch it with a whole bunch of water, right? The rain made it float. But the, but the tire was, was keeping it together. They put in the reeds on the banks. They put it in the bank. Um, see, let me look. They put it on the reeds on the bank of the Nile. So they wanted to see if it flowed. She tested it. So she had to become an engineer. She had to become an engineer to her child. She had to take a little basket, tie it up, and trust this basket with her child's life and toss it in a crocodile infested river with the hopes that the child would make it down there to safety. She didn't even know where the child was going. She just put it out there in hopes that somebody would find her baby. But the plan came in. I said the wall, the writing on the wall came in because Mary and she ran down the side of the river as the child was going, watching her baby brother could get eaten up in a minute of time. She watched it. But he got down there, and the Pharaoh's daughter was down there washing up, right? Washing up, and guess what kicked in? 
her motherly instincts kicked in. What is the child doing in this park? Because she had soldiers, she had them around her while she was bathing. Could not get past them if they wanted to. Because they was guarding her. So she was in a park that they had probably placed at Washington, a park that wasn't a part of the Nile. It's part of the Nile, but it was protected more off on the outskirts of it so that she can she can sit in the water and, and bathe. But here it is. She gets him, her mother instinct kicks in, and then Marion, she kicks in with the plan. I know somebody that will raise the child for you. I know, and sometimes you have to find some people to help raise your children. Sometimes it's good to have another mother on board, and that's why they give you godparents. They give you godmothers. And that I just bless God for you. I just want to tell you personally, I really thank the Lord for you being my son's godmother. I couldn't be more grateful for the tough love you show him that he need. I mean, for real, I mean, and beat me down when I'm trying to do other stuff. So I really thank you, Sister Johnson. I really thank you. And we need more women like that to step up and be leaders when it comes to these children. We can't do it by ourselves. I look at Marge, too, if I could say Marge. She's like a little mother in the church. I mean, you just, I mean, the kids love her, and she just, and, and it reminds me, look, and I'm not going to let them, I'm not going to let y'all have all of it. Because it reminds me when Minister Johnson was in the back. Everybody loved him. They told me what to say, though. He coloring. We coloring back here. We are, uh, yeah, we learning. And, man, I pray right now, man, man, we're going to get together. We're going to pray that we can get that, the same ones we had back there. We can get them back to come back, man. We can get them to come back. We can't give up on them. So here we see all of this going on with Jack. But I don't even have to go through her. I know she had courageous faith. Because when you look at it, courageous is something you do that you would normally not do on a certain situation. Courageous is saying, okay, the king just told me if I find any, you find anybody, do what I say. She went against the decree. Are you willing to go against what the world decree is telling you, what the world is placing on you, the values? Are you willing to go against it and say no when the world is trying to get you to say yes? This wasn't no ordinary child, y'all. So she was not afraid of the king's little whatever. You, you can call it. A, it was just a proposal. And her eyes said, you, you're not saying anything to me because I'm going to do what I got to do. And I look at this, man, this story, and I think about some of you women out there, and I think about my sisters. I think about uh, just people I've been encountered with, ministry with, and how they take care. Like the mother of this house. I think about it. At one time, raising all the, her children along with taking girls and uh, taking their kids. I mean, you know, it's so hard to be, um, uh, to take somebody in and foster children. It's so hard because one of them, not yours, but you got to love them just like they came out your womb. You got to love them. I think about the mothers who are married to unbelieving husbands. And sometimes they will defile their husbands just to come to church and do what they got to do. I think about mothers who um, are unable to conceive, like you say. You can't conceive, but you're willing to adopt. You're willing to do. I think about mothers that stand up to their teenagers, sons and daughters. And, and you tell them right off the back, no, no, no. I think about the mothers that give up ludicrous, uh, give up careers. That I mean, that are a financial blessing. They'll give it up just to raise children. May not even be their children, but they give it up. And that may sound crazy to everybody who's around us, but God has you. See, the one thing I learned that they fear God more than they fear men. And that's what Moses' mother did. She feared God more than she feared the Pharaoh. They were obedient, man. See, these mothers will rather fear God and please God than to please people and fear people whether it be their children or their husbands. God is first in my family. 
I told him, you love God more than you love me. And I love God more than I love you. Doesn't mean we don't love each other. But there's a fine line when it comes to serving God. Who you going to serve? Who will you serve? That's the big thing. I want to please God. That's who I want to please. And another thing I feel, they trust God. You got to trust God to do God's will. You can't even do what God asks you to do until you trust him. That's the fact of it. You trust God, you'll be obedient. You'll be obedient, you'll do what God asks you to do. You'll do exactly what God is calling you to do. Even in the face of threatening circumstances, he know that God will take care of you. You got to say, I know you're going to take care of me. You didn't, you didn't bring me this far. So hiding the baby was nothing to her. Even though the baby was helpless, she had faith that the baby would make it safe into somebody's hand to take care of. Because it was she did all she could do. And when all when you can do all you can do, and it gets to all you can do, just stand. The rest God would take. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I know it might not have been the type of hooping and wailing message that we normally it's it's a challenging time even to talk about mothers. We all are nothing but dirt. Can I just say that? And sometimes we think so hotly of ourselves that we forget where we come from. I know sometimes we can get a good job and the job will start making us dress like we, we dressing to impress. And we get to these things where we, we might get nice homes and nice cars and stuff and then we have to give ourselves a self-check. It's almost like taking the oil and seeing what oil you got in there and pull it out. Because at the end of the day, you know, we need a refreshing too. You got to check the dipstick to see how much oil you have left. You don't want to be like the five foolish virgins. That it was time to go see the master. He ain't had no oil left. He ain't had nothing left. You thought you had a lot of oil left. And that's what your brain will cause you to do, to think so much that you'll forget what's important. Have you heard anything today? Funny need, you stand in need for any type of prayer. So much stuff to pray for. You want God to do something special in your parenting area. Fell short a few times and need some support from God in the spirit. There be none. There be none for prayer. Because I truly believe God has what you need. 